country safely. Through your worship, uh, I can see where Councillor Count Sarrell is coming from here, but again, again, uh, we're, we're looking at the expense of refurbishing that, that upstairs, and I'm sure, I'm sure if we have some interest at parties and they're going to put the money up to refurbish it, um, we're saving the taxpayers, you know, 60, we're, we're saying $65,000 for a community center, I'm sure, I'm sure it'd be a lot more than that. I, I would I would like uh, Doug uh, to to notify these people that are interested and let's see what kind of uh, proposal they come up with and then go from there. I, I mean, it's not something we have to decide tonight. If we could see what these interests are, if they're still interested. Uh, when was the last time, Doug, you talked to these people? Mr. Sweet. For your worship. Um, actually, one gentleman called today and one last week. I actually had him submit a formal request that there is interest. Um, but just for clarification, we don't know what they're going to propose. They've been brought through that the building is as is, and they would come back for proposal. They may ask for the town to submit money, or they may not. So that's the unknown right now. Brother, uh, through your worship, I, I would like, to, before we make any decision, I, I would like to see the, the uh, people come forward and see see what the proposal is, see what they're offering, and then go from there. We're, we're, if you can get, get a hold of them this week, and we can get something on the table and see see what they're they're planning on doing. And, and if it's going to cost us money, if it's going to cost us money, then I would have to agree with uh, Councillor Caxero. So I, that's that's what I like to see, what what they're coming forward and, and what they're putting into the building. Thank you. Contributor. Yeah, thank you. Through your worship. Um, to that point, I don't think uh, somebody who's looking to run a business is necessarily going to tell us everything that they're interested in doing unless it is an RFP because they'll put their idea out. Somebody goes, eh, that's a pretty good idea. I think I can do it cheaper and try to get out there. I, I believe that we have two choices here and the correct choice because I do believe a um, business run by business people is always a better uh, idea. Um, and I'm going to make the motion that we uh, we go with 2A, the recommendation, the council direct administration to issue a request for proposal. Okay, we have a motion. We have a seconder. Councilor Bondi, to the motion. Questions? I had a couple questions, but they aren't to the motion, so... I won't get them answered. Councillor Bondi. Thank you. I just also think as a backup plan, we should start to get costings on how to make it into a community center so that we're prepared come the next budget plan that we are, we're ready to, to deliberate that in 2017. Right? In 2017? So whatever the cost. Okay. Councillor Cactero. Your Worship, I'll just ask for a reporting vote, please. So to the motion under item uh, for the recommendation of 2A, that council direct administration to issue an RFP to operate the Colchester Harbor building. Uh, Councillor Snively, how do you vote? Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, Councillor Caxero. Deputy Mayor Malosh. Councillor Bondi. Support. Mayor McDermott. Support. Councillor Bjorkman. Support. So to the motion, Councillor Caxero opposed. Councillor Snively, support. Deputy Mayor Malosh, support. Mayor McDermott, support. Councillor Bondi, support. And Councillor Bjorkman, support. With the recorded vote of for oh, five to one, uh, the, the motion is carried. Thank you, sir. Item 7E, Infrastructure and Development, report number 2016-09. That said report be received and that funds in the amount of $50,000 be reallocated from capital project PW-16011 to Capital Project PW160027. Thank 
Okay, Cheryl? I'll move the recommendation. And supported by Councillor Snively. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Just something might be missing from the agenda sheet. Get that straightened out here. Item 7F, Planning Department, Report Number 2016-20, Rezoning Amendment. Your Worship, I believe we're on yeah, 7F. Um, uh, so report number 2016-20, zoning amendment, Drexler Diving Systems, with the recommendation that Council approve the rezoning of the property at 470 Jackson Street to permit the operation of Drexler Diving Systems as an additional permitted use, and that an amending zoning bylaw be submitted to Council for approval. Council Cax, Your Worship, I'll move the recommendation. Supported by Council Bjorkman. Questions? Deputy Mayor Malash. Uh, through to um, Sarita Jabor, Assistant Planner. Is this something that we have to have a meeting on, or is public opinion or public uh, gets to say before we actually change the zone? Through your worship, this is technically the public meeting. We did circulate everybody within 120 meters of the subject property. We received no complaints. We received support for, for the zoning amendment. Um, in the last three years, we haven't received any objections either to the temporary use of that structure. Thank you. Thank you, your worship. Country Cake Zero. Through your worship, and I can attest to the fact that uh, we were circulated because I am within that uh, radius. Uh, the business owner uh, and uh, he actually lives uh, lives at the site. Uh, he's actually in the ground. Yep. Um, and um, I certainly haven't heard anything adverse uh, for, as far as the business operating there. And um, I, I believe it's a great business to have. He, uh, he does diving classes. Uh, he has a lot of equipment there. Um, you wouldn't really know that there's a, a business being operated, and maybe someday I'll take up scuba diving. <laughs> Anything further? All in favor of the motion. Motion carries. Item 7G, Planning Department, Report Number 2016-22, Re-Proposed Seawatts Trail Extension for 2017. That said report be received and Council approves the extension of paved shoulders on County Road 50 from Hol Holiday Bluff Drive to Victoria Street in accordance with the Countywide Act of Transportation Plan, the municipal contribution being $296,000 according to the 60% municipal contribution to meet the town's 2017 commitment to completion of the comprehensive CWAT's active transportation system. Moved by Councillor Snively, supported by Councillor Caxero. Any questions, Councillor Caxero? To your worship, uh, to um, Mr. Napsey. I, uh, I had mentioned in the past, and I, I did have a, a brief conversation with uh, one of uh, Kingsville's uh, council members. And I don't know if, uh, if there's an opinion necessarily from our administration, but it seems to me that uh, it, it might be worthwhile at some point uh, getting together with Amherstburg and Kingsville, seeing as there's uh, County Road 50 exp extends uh, into both of those municipalities. And that seems to be obviously the developing uh, area, certainly for, for Seawatts anyway. It's going to be one of the major routes uh, along the shoreline and, 
would it be beneficial at all to, to potentially try to get more of this done uh, and in, in trying to grab some grant money from the federal and uh, provincial government in conjunction with those other two municipalities? Or, or uh, because I just I, I see this County Road 50 thing being something that's not going to be accomplished for probably 20 years uh, in, in its entirety. And, and I, I really see it as, as a benefit to all three municipalities. And there's a big push for active transportation from both uh, upper levels of government. I think it might be worthwhile to get together with those other two municipalities and uh, and in conjunction with, with obviously, the, the county because they're they're in support of it. They, they've developed this plan. Um, to try to grab some some funding and, and do more of this uh, in, in a swath as opposed to doing it piecemeal, little by little, and it's costing more and more every year, so it's only going to continue to go up. Uh, it might be worthwhile taking a look at something like that, and I'd like to hear what uh, Mr. Nepsey has to say. Mr. Nepsey, uh, through your worship, uh, absolutely. Anytime we can uh, partner with our with our neighboring municipalities. Uh, that's favorable for for uh, both grant applications. Uh, finding the right grant, first of all, though, uh, is the challenge. But um, if something does come up that fits, um, by all means, we will approach um, Amherstburg and Kingsville both to see if that's something that's in their list of priorities as well, because that's something that's a challenge as well. Um, you know, it, it may be a priority for us, but it but it might not be, or that link might not be a priority for them. Um, We've moved along um, a good distance from, I guess, what you'd call your Colchester Center outwards. Um, you know, the challenge is, is, you know, potentially having those neighboring municipalities start from their ends and move inward. If they're going to start inward and move out, then, you know, we have to wait for them to catch up. But um, by all means, uh, we'll put those feelers out um, when we get closer to those extremities and, and um, see what happens. Thank you, sir. Ready for the vote? All in favor? Motion carries. 7-H, Planning Department, report number 2016-24, Rio Oil Enterprises Limited Road Conveyance. Road conveyance. That said report be received, and that bylaw number 1529, being a bylaw to declare certain municipal lands as a public right-of-way, be read a first, second, and third time and finally passed on June 20th. Moved by Councillor Caxero, supported by Deputy Mayor Malash. Questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item 7I, Building Department, report number 2016-05, the May 2016 Building Report for receipt. Moved by Councilor Kaiser and Councilor Bjorkman Sports. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. 7J, Report 7J, Corporate Services, Report Number 2016-05, Additions to Miscellaneous Fees and Charges for Receipt and for Schedule A to Bylaw Number 1331 to be revised effective July 1st to add the new fees for the Finance and Business Services Department. By Councillor Bondi and Councillor Snively, and that's to approve it also. Councillor, yes, receiving. Good. Okay. All in favor? Motion carries. Item 7K Infrastructure and Development, verbal report and update on uh, update to Council on the flood and mitigation measures in Ward 1. Mr. Nepsey, Director of Infrastructure and Development. Uh, through your worship, uh, just wanted to provide a verbal update on the, I guess, what we're doing um, uh, as far as uh, the town's end and what we're doing with our partners to um, move forward with our flooding uh, mitigation plan. So we've got um, capital works, the construction works, and we've got the policy end uh, going at the same time. Um, you can see in town we've got uh, construction uh, in full effect. Uh, Brian East is moving along very well. Uh, the sanitary sewer, um, 
the increase in size to the sanitary sewer, the sewer's in, the services have begun. If not, uh, I think they're very close to completion. Um, so that's, that's moving well. We're looking at restorations now there. The force main work um, from Talbot to Hanlon um, has been completed. Uh, they're looking now to do the force main from South Talbot um, under Victoria. So, you know, you see all the, uh, the pipe laying on the side of the road there. So they're moving along nicely. They'll be starting the pump station works this week, um, which will be right next to the ball diamond. So that's a separate contract, as well as the, um, the um, bypass chamber at the sewage works. So everything's moving along nicely. Um, the MTO, we still have to get approval from the MTO to cross our force main under the highway. We're having uh, a bit of a um, discussion with them uh, uh, as far as what requirements they require. What requirements they require, but yeah. Um, but uh, the, soil, the soil boring that, they've, um, that they made us do, the report is being generated and hopefully there's no issues with that. There's no preliminary indications of any issues, so it's, I think it's just a matter of formality with the MTO to get our encroachment agreement and allow us to go under the road there. Um, we've met with IRCA. Uh, they've met with all the municipal partners with respect to the regional stormwater guideline. Uh, we've had uh, one, one general meeting to discuss uh, the, the framework for what we're looking for. And then IRCA's with Stantec has broken off and done individual meetings with each municipality looking at um, what you want out of it, what requirements you think are, are necessary, um, you know, s special indications for your area, what you're looking for. So um, IRCA is in, in with Stantec is in, in full-blown mode as far as creating that regional stormwater guideline based on the, the uh, three pages of items that were brought forth by all the municipal partners. So um, things are going well there. I, I think everybody's virtually on the same page. Uh, as far as what that document and, and what's going to come of it. Um, so it's very promising that, that we're all thinking regionally and we're all thinking on the same page that way. Um, so from that, the next, the next step is going to be to modify the scope. IRC has got to modify the scope with respect to that guideline and bring forth a, a draft document, which should be coming in July. So that's on track. Uh, I think they're... Their initial dates were, were fall, and I, they're on track for that. Um, running concurrent with that, we're also doing our own stormwater analysis on our stormwater system. We're looking to model our stormwater system. Uh, we've got flow monitors in place. We've been going through all the as-built drawings. We've been doing investigations of that storm sewer network to ensure uh, what the as-built say is what we actually have in ground. From that model, we'll be able to generate uh, and look at how these storms impact our systems as a whole. You know, we've, we've been very good with stormwater. Uh, you know, you look at each development. Does this one, does this one look okay? Does this one look okay? We have never really looked at the system as a whole, and that's what Stantec's doing. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we haven't had much rain. So our modeling data that we're collecting through this flow monitoring um, isn't as complete as we'd like it in order to create a, a good working model. So. Um, we've instructed the modeling company to leave those flow monitors in um, to capture a few bigger storms uh, to be able to enhance our model. So um, that's looking to wrap up in the fall as well. So the fall seems to be on track with the interim control bylaw that council put in place. Um, whether the regional stormwater guideline that IRCA is preparing and Stantec's preparing will be finalized by then, I'm not sure. But I think we'll be far along enough in the process for us to be able to make some decisions on, on where we want to go. So, uh, you know, to the builders that are asking, you know, that's something that, that we're pushed with. I think that fall, that fall deadline uh, or, or timeline is still valid uh, with respect to both capital works and the policy works on the, on the other side. So um, a little bit of an update there for you. I think... Uh, I know uh, Donna had noted um, at every council meeting to have an update. I'm not sure much will change in the next two weeks, but maybe at, in a month or so we can we can uh, uh, have this chat again. So. Thank you, sir. Questions, Deputy Mayor Malash.
Country Cake Zero. Through you, Mr. Your Worship, uh, to Mr. Nepsey. So the, uh, I've heard, I've seen evidence of some work that's that's happening. Uh, two other areas of the of Ward One or Essex Center that I'm concerned about are, are the Gallo subdivision and the Tully Meadows subdivision. And I'm just, I didn't hear anything in there talking about those two areas. Can you just highlight maybe what's going on in those areas? Mr. Epsey, sure. Yep, through your worship. With respect to Tully's Meadows, um, the, I guess the contract one works with respect to the force main works on this side, the pumping stations and uh, improvements at pump station three which is next to, the, next to the soccer diamond and the ball diamonds, will improve the entire sewer system for this area, this side of town. So from Talbot this way, which includes Tully Meadows. So I guess in short, the improvements we're making that you see on Fairview and the pump station will improve um, the sanitary sewer system capacity in Tully's Meadows. Uh, with respect to Gallows, um, the Sanitary sewer improvements on Bryan will increase the overall capacity on that side of town, which will help Gallows as well. Um, we're also looking at some other specifics with respect to Gallows. Uh, they have some uh, um, some high I and I issues there, so uh, we're looking at doing maybe some increased investigations in that area. Further, uh, just a yep. little bit. Um, so. Are we at some point in time leaving, leading into stormwater uh, issues feeding into the sewage system in these areas? Uh, through your worship, I guess that's what started this whole thing. I mean, that's the issue, right? There's too much stormwater in our sanitary sewers. Um, we went through the full investigation of the sanitary systems to look for the inflow infiltration. We did the, the smoke testing. Um, there was no needle in the haystack. There was no aha moment where we found uh, um, something that, I guess, that could be fixed easily. So the capital works that we're doing, uh, um, instead of taking, you know, because we couldn't find how the water was getting into the system, these improvements are assuming it's going to get in the system. Well, how do we get out of the system, and how do we improve it on the uh, on uh, the back end? So basically, we're treating the problem on the other side as opposed to. Uh, attacking it on the uh, on the side where it's getting it, just because uh, there was nothing direct to tackle that way. Is that it? That's good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councilor Kaxer and Councilor Bjork. Three worship uh, to Mr. Napsey. So our interim control bylaw, just just for clarification, um, was in place for one year. At the conclusion of that year whether we had these things in place or not, the interim control bylaw would be lifted, correct? Uh, through your worship, I, I believe so, but I think there's always the option to, to, to continue or extend. I'm not sure on the rules exactly, but that's something uh, we can look in, into as we get closer to that date. Okay. Through you, your worship, further to that. Um, I guess, and I'm sure everybody around the table wants the same thing. We, we want to be able to lift that as soon as possible. Certainly if there's anything um, that's in place, any documentation that's in place, whether it be draft or, or otherwise, um, prior to the fall, uh, because in my mind, uh, the capital works, uh, even if it's not done, obviously we're doing it. I mean, it's, it's very evident that we're doing all of that. I think really the, the thing that we're waiting for uh, you know, uh, looking forward, how do we deal with this? And, uh, and that's being done. And once those documents are even in draft form, I mean, I would suggest that as, as soon as there's enough information there, and I know, I know that that's what you would do anyway, but certainly the support, I think, from Council is bring it forward, and, and we would be more than happy to, uh, to use that as long as it's sufficient evidence that, yes, that's what we're working towards. Thank you, uh, through your worship, uh, to Chris. It's great information. Uh, again, we, we struggle a lot of times to get the information out to the residents and everybody that's uh, uh, looking for it. I know that uh, um, we were looking at putting in uh, something on the web page 
um, update uh, as we got into this season as we're encouraging people to uh, take up on our uh, our downspout program uh, just wondering how is that uh, gone since we, we put that back onto the uh, the web page and got the, the door hangers for that has there been a, an increase in that uptake Chris three ownership unfortunately not um, we haven't seen uh, um, we've had uh, uh, I guess a minor amount of, of residents that have come forward to claim you know their their monies uh, as far as the 75 percent or $75 subsidy program that we're allowing for the downspout disconnect I think the next step is something I'm working with um, Mr. Roger on is the a bylaw that actually makes it uh, um, you know a bylaw that requires you not to be connected and then I think that would be the next step and, and then we might get some further movement that uh, that way so okay. further yes thank you and just further to that uh, we had talked about uh, this summer maybe having a student um, who could go into our, our areas that were experiencing a lot of that issue and just uh, you know talking to people or walking through the neighborhoods and looking at we know that uh, we're not going to disconnect where it hits a sidewalk or hits a driveway but um, just having somebody go out there with that information and, and do a survey of the area um, did we did we look any further into that uh, through worship no that was uh, I guess as a committee we decided let's to do the do the immediate blitz with the door knocker or the door hangers uh, and, and that uptake to see if the the residents would would um, you know would come forward that way um, in order to send a student out there what we'd like in place is an actual bylaw that says as opposed to uh, um, you know I think what we've done is the whole voluntary compliance you know with uh, with the suggestion that it's bettering you know not just their system but their neighbor system uh, definitely I think the next step is to um, look at look at a, a bylaw that sets that out Councillor Snively through your worship um, I, I thought um, at a previous council meeting that we were bringing it forward that uh, we were looking at a school to go around and, and, and take the numbers house numbers of the ones that weren't complying with the disconnect I, I thought I thought we had direction am I right or wrong there I, I thought I thought we were looking into that already through your worship it was discussed at a high level as far as was that something we could do uh, like I said we we looked into the student um, going out there to do that the issue is we don't have a bylaw in place I mean the student would be providing the same information that the door the door hanger provided you know it's in your best interest to do it uh, etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, the bylaw is what's needed next and once we get the bylaw then that's something we can look at having somebody go out there to enforce the bylaw and to be able to say look you can't do this uh, here's why and, and then that's the next step so it was discussed at a high level uh, counselor but but um, uh, it, it was never enacted that way. further uh, for you chair um, I, I'm sure that uh, this lift of, of uh, the building and, and you know everybody knows that we've already started the project uh, we can all see the pipes are out there I, I can't I can't foresee a problem lifting it by September can you can you Chris see any problem at all lifting it by September I'm, I'm sure we, the builders would like to know and I'm sure we can lift it by September like we're into June now we got July August the end of September those pipes should be laid by then I I would say maybe I'm wrong but I think they're well on their way to do it aren't they through your worship that's entirely up to council I mean council is the one who put it in, in place in the first place and, and when it gets lifted is, is entirely up to council uh, but the reason it was put in place my understanding of the reason that council put it in place was for two reasons not just the capital works but also the policy side of it moving forward what what type of restrictions and what type of stormwater management plans do we want to put on our residential uh, um, lots and our buildings to ensure that uh, that we're protected moving forward so uh, like I said all those policies and, and the regional stormwater guideline and, and as Councillor Caxero noted uh, 
should all be coming together nicely in the fall and, and we should have enough information in place that would leave us in a comfortable position, I would think, uh, for council to be able to um, you know, move forward with that. Yes, just further. Uh, but I'm, I'm sure that uh, probably half the project or three quarters of the project would be done by it then, eh, Chris? Wouldn't you say at the, the laying of the pipe, that, like it's all out there now? It should. I, three worship, uh, yeah, half or three quarters, absolutely. The, the the large issue, I mean, there's a lot of uh, vertical construction take place still. There's the pump station upgrades. I mean, we're digging a, a 30 foot hole, you know, four meters across, uh, not just at at uh, pump station three, but also at the sewage plant. So there there is quite a bit of construction still left to do, um, but uh, um, you know, and it's all tied together. So. You know they're on track. Uh, September would be early for that construction to be complete. I, I'm, I'm thinking more October, November for the construction to be complete. But um, uh, as far as commission, thank you, Chris. Okay, Country Berkman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, I just, I just want to say I think we want to be careful as council not to speculate as to when something might be. We still have MTO permissions we're waiting for. We still have there's there's groups ahead of us that could really throw a wrench in, and we just don't know. And I don't want anybody getting the idea that you know they're starting to mark on their calendar I can get in the ground uh, right now I think we need to just continue to follow along and keep up with the updates and see where we go and 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 uh, you know keep our fingers crossed that that we don't get any of those uh, barriers get thrown in our way because I'd love to be able to do that but I think we need to make sure that we're not giving anybody some idea that something's uh, coming down the road until we actually have these numbers and, and uh, construction done Deputy Mayor Malash. Thank you, through Your Worship. So just one thing that I'd like to make sure, though, is that uh, we're talking about new procedures, standard operating procedures, and for uh, new construction and so on, what we want to see in our, you know, as far as what we want to tell our builders they, that we require. I just want to make sure that's not the last piece to come forward. Just, you know, like I know there's a lot of work involved in that, so hopefully we can have that already all done and settled before we get to the point where I don't want MTO to come along and say, okay, you guys are good to go and everything. And now we're sitting on waiting on our piece that we have to do in, in house. So I would hope that we can get that all covered off and we're ready there sitting and waiting for the day that MTO says and the construction is done. I don't want to be our in-house procedures that hold up anything once, once we get to the point where we want to take off this interim bylaw, interim control bylaw. Thanks. Mr. Nepsey. Uh, through your worship, uh, the MTO is, is to do with the actual construction right now of the one one small piece or one piece of the one contract. So the MTO just needs to allow us to put that force main under their highway. There's no, indi you know, we just have to jump through a few hoops with them as far as uh, some design requirements. Um, but, but I have, I really, I don't have a concern that that's going to be an issue and hold up construction. As there's nothing on our end to do. We've already, the design is in place. We just need them to review it and, and, and be okay with the soil conditions uh, that we're getting from the soils report right now. As far as for the builders, that ties into that regional stormwater guideline that we're looking at uh, completing with the, every other municipality around here. So will we have full agreement from every municipality where we're going with that? in September? I don't know. I don't think so. But will we have an indication of where we're going to be setting our requirements? More than likely, yes. So I, I think we'll be able to, uh, you know, have a better discussion in, in September as far as uh, what we're looking at doing moving forward in the future. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Mr. Nepsey. Thank you. And with regards to Deputy Mayor Malash's last concern, those were the concerns I had. Same thing. You know, we want to be ready when the builders, you know, when we get the word. I don't want paperwork, just like Deputy Mayor Malaj said. Our policy, I hope it's, you're working on it as we speak. And it is ready, you know, when the work's done and bang. Just like Deputy Mayor Malaj said, we're not waiting on paperwork getting done because I know we've all been hounded by these builders and everything. Not only those people, but people who want to have a house built in our municipality instead of all. Guess what? The last one told me they're going to another municipality. They can't wait for us. So, 
you know it's too bad but we're doing what we have to do to make sure everyone's happy in town but uh, we don't want it to be held up by the paperwork and i agree with deputy mayor Malash, so thank you very much for the report sir all in favor of the receipt motion carries report 7l corporate services verbal report by Donna Hunter, Acting CAO and Director of Corporate Services, providing counsel with an update on two changes from QP to the Code of Conduct for Employees. Three, Your Worship. Um, I just wanted to call uh, counsel's attention to some, or two small revisions to this uh, policy that was brought forward last meeting for approval. Uh, it was reviewed by the QP um, after that we got comments back and literally what there was only two areas that they were concerned about uh, in terms of outside employment they just wanted to make sure that the CAO would uh, not hold that back unreasonably and so there's been wording to that effect added as well if there's a conflict between the code of conduct and the QP agreement that the QP agreement prevails and so that wording has been added. So those are the two changes to the code of conduct. Otherwise, it is as it appeared in the, in, when it was approved by council. Any questions or comments? Motion received. Councilor Bjorkman, Councilor Cactero. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. And finally, Your Worship, uh, my apologies. It appears we inadvertently omitted a report from the agenda. Um, with your worship's concurrence, I was, I was hoping we could add this 7M, um, report 7M, a verbal report from Chris Nepsey, Director of Infrastructure and Development, uh, speaking to the results of the RFP on the uh, demolition design and build of the salt storage facility. Thank you, Thank you very much. Mr. Nepsey. Uh, through your worship, thank you, Council. Um, I'm gonna take you through the report uh, Stop me at any time, please. Uh, uh, if you have any questions, there's a, a little bit of info coming at, coming at you that way. So I'm looking for, um, for you to uh, award the request for proposal for the design, demolition, and build of a salt storage facility uh, to Baronetti Construction Limited. Um, I'm also looking, or, or looking, to, I rec recommending that uh, that the amount to be debentured for capital project PW 16-0022 salt shed replacement be increased by $65,000. Um, so we led an RFP uh, following the guidelines of the town's procurement bylaw uh, for a new salt shed at the Ferris Road Operations Depot. Um, we posted it to our town website into Merck's May 11th, uh, 2016. Uh, we received three proposals. They are evaluated using a scorecard approach, taking into consideration the experience with similar projects, understanding the proposal scope, um, the quality of the proposal, qualifications of key personnel and staff availability, their work plan, their schedule, their approach, their methodology, and their ability to provide all services. So it's something that we do similar to all our RFPs. Um, the review process team included myself, uh, Richard Beausoleil, the manager of Capital Works, and infrastructure, uh, Jackson Tang, the assistant manager of business services. Uh, after reviewing each of the proposals, uh, and we each scored them separately, uh, we totaled the scores and Baronetti Construction Limited scored the highest. They addressed all areas of the scope identified, uh, and they have provided the town of Essex with various construction services in the past successfully. So they've done work for us and they've, they've done it well. So we had budgeted originally $300,000 for this project as part of the 2016 budget. Um, we've been contributing to that budget for the last five years. So it's something we identified uh, in operations over five years ago. And, and you know, we set a budget back then where we thought where we would be five years from now. Um, so we built up a reserve of approximately $200,000 of that. During this year's budget deliberations, um, the life cycle reserve, we took that $200,000 that we had already put forward, was realloc reallocated to our other capital projects. And we noted that, that the salt shed would be entirely funded through long-term debt. So it was a project that we deemed was uh, um, acceptable uh, to use that, that formula and, and to put it on long-term debt, being a facility uh, and a structure that would be there for 
uh, a good amount of time. The reasons for the increase in costs um, from what we budgeted, uh, I had noted one already. So there's an increase in building materials and construction costs uh, for a job that we budgeted five years ago. Uh, in addition, uh, in, the, in the past several years, our legislated salt management plan uh, requires us to make yearly improvements to both handling and storage of salt. As a result, the shed has increased in size in order to accommodate the loading, delivery, and storage of all the salt indoors. So no more can you load or, or deliver or do anything outside. It's all got to be contained uh, within the building. What that will do, though, will greatly reduce our environmental, environmental impacts uh, um, of those loading and handling operations. Um, like I said, so based on the 2016 budgets, the nature of the project was identified as appropriate for long-term financing. So um, the, the budget or the proposed price from Baronetti, which is complete demolition and construction, is uh, $365,000. So consequently, uh, I'm looking at um, adding to that debenture by 65000 as a result, there will be no net impact to the 2016 budget, so, uh, which I think is, is, a, is a key statement. So uh, that's what I'm looking for. Councilor Caxero? Through your worship uh, to Mr. Nepsey, um, what percentage of the criteria was uh, pricing? Uh, through your worship, I don't recall offhand. I think it's done as around 40% typically. It's not over 50, but it's 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 a high number, uh, right. 35 or 40% typically. Further to that, uh, the other two bidders were they fairly close in price to the successful bidder? Uh, through your worship, uh, one was, I guess, fairly close, and and one was not. Further? Higher or lower? Higher. The one that was not, they're both higher. Both were higher. Any other questions? Deputy Mayor Malash. I'd like a motion that we uh, move forward on the construction. Supported by Councillor Cagsero. Questions to that motion? All in favor? Motion carries. Got time to listen to the young ladies? They might have something that you want to hear. Oh, okay. Yeah. Have a good night, Sherry. Item eight reports from youth members, and your worship, I should note that it appears we have two retiring uh, youth members uh, this evening. Now, did you flip the coin, ladies, to see who was going to speak first or second? Looks like Lauren won. She's going first. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, I just wanted to thank all of you here for uh, allowing Carly and I to be youth members for this town council. Um, it's been a great opportunity, uh, you know, just like looking in and seeing what you guys do and being here and, you know, giving my opinion on some stuff. Uh, and it's definitely something that I'm going to take with me as I move on further in life. Um, I also had one question for you uh, about next year and the position of the Harrow Youth Rep because we're transferring to Kingsville. Will that person still be coming to these meetings now because it's a different school? Or it's a good question. <laughs> so speaking through your worship, um, the the new procedural bylaw provides for. Um, youth members would still be at two. Um, one would be appointed uh, from council uh, from Ward 4 or Ward 3. That would be the one uh, appointment. And then the second one would be from either Ward 1 or Ward 2. Um, so in keeping with the, the spirit of the new procedural bylaw that provides for that, uh, Your Worship, I believe the intention is to um, advertise uh, for for the youth member um, and 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 go through the um, the local high schools as well um, and and look, and look for um, 
candidates uh, on that basis. Um, oh. Going to the CAC Zero. For your worship, uh, just for clarification then, would it be any student that is enrolled in a high school, not obviously not necessarily in the municipality because in wards three and four we won't have uh, a school in the municipality. So anybody that's enrolled in high school, I believe in grade 12, uh, that is living in our municipality and enrolled in a high school, is that correct? Uh, yes, Your Worship. Uh, they would, and they would have to be enrolled in the high school, um, residing in, in one of those particular wards. Um, but it, it, unlike in the past, it, um, the selection wouldn't necessarily come from a particular high school. So Karen could have been going to, if she wasn't graduating this year, she could have been going to the Lenova, and she could have been a rep, right? Okay, good. Go ahead, Karen. Okay, uh, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for that information. I'll definitely spread the word around to uh, the grade 11s at our school um, and get the news out, especially to student council as well, and seeing if anyone's definitely interested. Um, and then I will let them know uh, who should I have them contact if they are. Uh, speaking through your worship, uh, they can they can contact myself um, either you know, through, through the phone or email, um, but, but certainly uh, the, I, would, I would be the best contact for, for that. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Carly? Through you, Your Worship, um, I too would just like to thank you, Council, for the opportunity to sit on Council as the youth rep with Lauren for the year. Um, it was a great opportunity and learning experience for me, and I will certainly take this learning experience with me as I travel on to university next year. Thank you. Country Cac Zero. Thank you, Your Worship. Certainly, it's been a pleasure. Uh, it's nice to see uh, young members of the community sitting at the table. Um, I hope with uh, the way we've changed our agenda cover and uh, actually having you guys listed uh, as number eight uh, on our agenda, agenda item, items uh, from, from our youth members. Hopefully uh, we can uh, continue to improve uh, the engagement from uh, not only yourselves but uh, those in your footsteps. Uh, I think it's important to hear from you guys and uh, get some things from you. So I appreciate uh, your commitment uh, this past year and uh, certainly good luck. Country Bjorkman. Yep, through your worship. Uh, yes, thank you, ladies. Thanks for uh, being part of the, the, the team and, and uh, the system. And I'm going to just speak for Councillor Bondi for a, a moment. She'd love to see you as councillors someday. So, yeah. as you've seen all this and taken it in, to, uh, um, you know, we are always talking about we're trying to be as inclusive as we can and we need more women involved in our politics and, and what we do. So, hopefully, uh, you know, some of this inspired you and go out and inspire a few more people. But it's been great having you, and, and all the best to you in your future. Deputy Mayor Malash and Councillor uh, Thank you, through your worship. Thank you to both you young ladies. Uh, it's it's even a scary idea for adults to be part of this and, and sit up here in front of the, the public and to be viewed and, and have your ideas put out in the public uh, the way we do. So it takes a lot of courage as young ladies, and I'm very proud of both of you for taking that step forward, as I'm sure your families are as well, as well as your community um, that are supportive and uh, your friends. So congratulations and good luck on all your future endeavors. Councillor Snively. Through your worship, uh, again, I'm, I'm going to express uh, thank you very much for being here. And uh, I know both your families and just a little bit of advice, please stay in school. Please stay in school and be successful. Thank you. Okay. Uh, oh, I got a couple of comments. Uh, I don't know who to thank for making a suggestion. I'm almost thinking back. Might have been Councillor Bondi. It could have been 
Councillor Caxera, I'm not sure, but whoever suggested that we have youth representatives on our council, what a great idea, you know, to see you young people get involved. Like Larry says, I know both your parents, you know, and I know both your grandpas. And Lauren, they're proud of you. Believe me, I, I see them more often than I see your dad. I don't see Gore very often, but I see grandpa, you know, and her grandpa, Carl Davison, was the guy that cited the landfill for us, Windsor and Essex County. We're all proud of that. You should be very proud of your, your grandpa. And, uh, you know, when he came in here the first night and saw you there, he was out like this. I saw him in a restaurant, and, and he was just bubbling like crazy when you got selected here. So thank you on behalf of all of us in town here, because you do have good ideas that we old guys don't think about. And uh, like they've all said, good luck in your future endeavors, and I know you'll be successes in whatever you do. So thank you very much. Item nine, any updates uh, from County Council? Is this a good time now for, for announcements? Uh, you got another one, haven't you? Updates? Oh, updates, yes, yep. with regards to County Council. Yes, I had last month's term and you know, just before I turn it over to Deputy Mayor Malosh to make a comment on something that we found out last Wednesday night, you know, if like you council members would like to know what's going on in county council, I could forward the agenda to you people, and then, you know, you could pick something out of there if you don't watch us on Monday night, and if you don't, I don't blame you. But uh, if there's something that you want us to report on, we can do that. Like. You know, if we got 30 items, we're not going to tell you about 30. Like last time, I picked one out that I thought was the most important one, maybe to pass on to you people. And Richard's going to do that tonight. He's got one that, you know, here, we'll present this to him. So if you want that agenda, one or both of us can make sure you get that agenda. And, you know, you could check off, hey, I want to report back on this one. We could do that if that's what you want to see. So, I don't know. But anyways, Deputy Mayor Malash, thank you. Thank you, through Your Worship. So just uh, actually in the last agenda that we had, it was a pretty light agenda other than the fact that we had three presentations and they, they were a little bit lengthy. Um, but one of them was of interest, uh, if you haven't heard it in the news, is that our, uh, we had a, there were, we had some paramedics that went to an international paramedic competition and uh, our paramedic group that um, represented Ontario, Canada came in first, they won the gold. And this was over in the Czech Republic and uh, you might have heard of on the radio but uh, on Wednesday evening, uh, this would have been June, last Wednesday evening, uh, was June 13th. Can't remember for sure what yeah. day it was. June 13th. Um, we had uh, the four representatives of the team here, uh, sitting right here at the delegations table, and uh, Justin Lammers, who's the deputy chief provincial of uh, provincial standards for our EMS, uh, recognized the four members, and uh, I'm just going to mention their names: Chris Kerwin, Lance. Culver, Nick Monteleone, and I'm going to shorten his name, Slav Pulser, um, who won the gold in this prestigious competition. We watched a short, brief video uh, of them, and uh, I believe you can find the uh, video on YouTube if you uh, Google International Paramedic Competition winner, uh, Essex Windsor, and uh, but the, all four of them were so so excited and they just gave us a briefing of uh, what the competition included it was uh, part fun and it was part serious there were some very serious situations that they went through um, all the different types of uh, 
So we're very proud of these four and uh, the individuals that uh, were able to bring back the gold. I just want to mention that the BC Canada team won the silver. They were the previous winners. So when different countries around the world, apparently there were some 40 countries that were involved in this, uh, when they, people around the world talk about paramedics, we're very, very well respected in the world uh, as far as paramedic services. So it's something that I just wanted to bring forward because it's a good news story and uh, something that we can all be very proud of living in this area and give us confidence too that we have the very best of paramedics and high standards for those individuals in our community. So thank you. The only other thing that I wanted to mention quickly too was we went through, and I don't have the numbers for you this evening, but if you want numbers on the CWATS, what uh, was actually uh, approved for 2016, you can go on, on the county website and you can find the information on the county website. Nothing on bed bugs. <laughs> and that's it for me, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And that was last Wednesday, June the 15th. <laughs> yep. Councilor Caxero. Through your worship, uh, potentially to, I know it's supposed to be an update, but I would suggest, or uh, I guess I look to, to both of you, uh, potentially if there was somebody uh, on council that had a suggestion or something that we wanted to see brought forward at county council, maybe this would be an appropriate time, just so that it's in, uh, in the public uh, as to what we're, we're looking to do. Precisely, yes, sir. I, uh, through your worship, uh, I just was wondering, did you bring that one issue forward to the county council on, on the uh, Robinson Trucking? No. Yeah, I was going to call you the next day. Oh. I didn't get a hold of you, but, but yes, I did. Okay. And they're looking into it as they just did this within the last two years. So he doubts it, but he'll look into it, he said. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Item 10, correspondence, 10A, correspondence to be received by council, that the correspondence listed in items 10A, 1 to 4 be received. Country Cactero, Moose, Country Bjorkman, Sports, any questions on any of those? Country Bjorkman. Just a comment uh, to your worship that it's, it's great to see the support um, coming in from the different towns and townships regarding the widening of Highway 3. Um, we all know how important it is, and it's great to see that we've sent that information out and those requests, and that they're coming back from, as you said earlier today, I heard on the radio, all over the place. So it's, it's terrific to get that, re that uh, support. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? All in favor of the motion. Motion carries. Item 10B, correspondence to be considered for receipt and support by council. County of Essex municipal resolution on widening Highway 3 that the correspondence from the County of Essex dated May 27th advising that they have requested an opportunity to appear before the Minister of Transportation be received and that council supports a meeting with the county to discuss this issue. By Councilor Snively and supported by Councilor Cactero. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item 11 committee meeting minutes that the committee meeting minutes listed in items 11a through c be received adopted and the recommendations contained therein be approved as presented councilor cactero moves supported by Country bjorkman any comments or questions to any of them all in favor motion carries oh, oh sorry about that councilor councilor yeah. bjorkman um just a question through you to uh I think probably to Chris as far as uh, the recommendation to council from the advisory committee with regard to the uh, uh, handicap accessible parking space. Is that something we'll be able to uh, accommodate? Mr. Nepsey. Yeah, the recommendation was uh, appropriate signing be provided at the Essex soccer field that if possible be placed near the entrance along the fence. So they're looking for a recommendation to put something there by the soccer field. Uh, through your worship, yeah, it's something we would 
we can look at for the next season. I mean, that parking lot is going to be uh, completely excavated from Hanlon to the pump station for the remainder of this construction season. So, but uh, I'll work with uh, uh, Mr. Sweet, and that's something I think that we can uh, accommodate. Yes. Item 12, financial, 12A, 2015 draft financial statements. That the 2015 draft financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2015, be adopted as presented. Councilor Cactier and Councilor Snively, any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. 12B, March 2016, bank payments report for ratification as submitted. Councilor Bjorkman, Councilor Caxero, any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. 12C, April 2016, bank payments report for ratification as submitted. Moved by Councilor Caxero, supported by the mayor. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item 12D, 2016 capital report for month ending May 31st, 2016 and 2016 operating report for the month ending May 31st, 2016, for receipt. Moved by Councilor Bjorkman, Councilor Caxero. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Okay. Okay. Uh, item 15 under the agenda. Any announcements this evening? Councilor Snively? I, I just, uh, uh, your Worship, uh, this, this I'm, I'm talking to the public here. I, we already know uh, within the administration what we're doing, but I want, I want the public to be well aware that uh, on a property standards issue, that I know for a fact in the south end alone, we have 15 to 20 orders put on properties. So I want the public to be well aware we're on top of the issue and we're gonna stay on the issue until we get the properties cleaned up in the Essex area here and in the Harold Colchester area. So I just want the public to be aware of that. Um, the second item uh, I want the public to to know too, uh, I have a lot of questions asked about Petro. So if, if Donna could touch on that, um, I talked to Donna already and she gave me some of the report on it. And again, I wanna thank Donna, especially for all the updates that she's been given council all the way along. Uh, uh, she's keeping us up to date on all the open files, so, which is great and I appreciate that, Donna. Thank you. If you give the public an update on what's okay. going on with Petro. Ms. Hunter? Are you, with your worship, um, <clears throat> I did have contact this afternoon with um, uh, the person that um, Russ Phillips had been dealing with uh, in terms of this whole Petro Canada site. They are in the midst of re remediation at the moment. Uh, the re what they're removing is the source of the, the contamination, not the contamination itself. They expect to be done that probably within the next week. And what they were contacting us for was to find out how we wanted the site left in terms of for topsoil and gravel, because they normally just leave the site as uh, packed and gravel. And what they were asking us, do you want it packed with or without the gravel? And so I, I spoke with Doug Sweet, uh, the Director of Community Services this afternoon, and he said they, they would prefer to have it just packed and they would then put the topsoil on and overseed it. Um, the, the agreement that they've given me, I've sent to our legal counsel for review um, because I wanna make sure the town's protected in terms of should there be any issues with that site in the future while we have a lease with them. And then um, the only other part of that is that the, there's these monitoring wells that they are suggesting be, will be on the property that we'll have to make sure that they're protected. And so I'm trying to get some more details on what they expect in terms of protection, just so I can make sure that we can accommodate that. So that's where we are with that right at the moment. Thank you. Okay, Thank you. Okay. 
Item 16, bylaws, 16A bylaws that require third and final reading this evening. Bylaw number 1522, to enter into a site plan control agreement between the Town of Essex and ATM Pharmacies Limited. Moved by Councilor Cacciaro, supported by Councilor Bjorkman. Any questions? All favor? Motion carries. 16A2, bylaw number 1523, regulating the erection of signs in the Town of Essex. Moved by Councilor Cacciaro and Deputy Mayor Malash. Supports? Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. 16A3, bylaw number 1524, to authorize the execution of a deployment agreement. Moved by Councilor Snively, supported by Mayor McDermott. Any questions? All in favor? Motions carried. Item 16A4, bylaw number 1526, to confirm the proceedings of the June 6th meeting, regular council meeting. Moved by Councilor Snyder, Councilor Bjorkman, supported by Deputy Mayor Malaj. Trying to get in there, Larry. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carried. Item 16B, bylaws for first, second, third, and final reading. Bylaw number 1536. To authorize the execution of an agreement between the Town of Essex and Her Majesty the Queen in Right of Ontario, as represented by Minister Responsible for Senior Affairs. Moved by Country Cactero, supported by Deputy Member Lash. Questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item 16C, bylaws that require first and second reading, bylaw number 1533, for the declaration of surplus lands by the Corporation of the Town of Essex. Councilor Snively moves, supported by Councilor Bjorkman. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Bylaw 16C2, bylaw number 1534, to confirm the proceedings of this June 20th regular council meeting. Moved by Deputy Mayor Malone, supported by Councilor Caxero. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Carly, take your sign home with you. Hang it up proudly. I see Lauren got hers, so good job.